Good morning guys and welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines on this fine Monday morning. Quite warm today actually. We've come in this morning to, again, usual Monday morning, people camping on the doorstep. Uh, one of the guys was to bring this one in. So this is a, another Cosworth. It's out of a four-wheel drive Sapphire. Um, and what he wants, he's bought the bottom end in. He's got, actually got new bearings and what have you in there that he's put in, but we've obviously got to take them out. Um, we've got to check all the housings. Got the crank here. He wants us to check the size. If in doubt, we've got to grind it. Obviously balance the crank assembly. Oil pump, which we're going to check. Maybe need renewing. A nice rusty old flywheel, which we've got to clean up face um, and then balance the crank assembly with a new helix clutch. I like the helix clutches. I would have thought this is probably a six paddle. Uh, a five paddle. Yeah, these are nice. These are They're quite a harsh cover, um, but they do take good torque, these things. So we've got to put our ductile iron top hat liners in this. Um, obviously check all the running clearances, do a bit of a dummy build, then give it him back and he's going to, um, and he's going to be building it. Again, same as the, the Kevin Poulton's one that I did that already had the long studs in. It's got the old style long studs. So these have got the 17mm um, fixed sort of washer how housing on there um, but we're going to be replacing two of those with the Julian Godfrey studs and just going a bit deeper on these two here behind the core plugs um, obviously you've got those look, lugs in the base there so yeah we've got Cosworth pistons in that box which are in really really good condition so I'll just be doing a measurements and checking those and um, they've got the valve pockets in etc so probably be using those again and just boring those liners to fit those pistons so yeah Another cosy week by the looks of it. Got other stuff to crack on with. I want to be cracking on with uh, Pete's normally aspirated Cosworth this week if I can because I'm away at Centre Parks next week. So um, yeah, bit of a mad rush to get everything up to date before I bugger off on all of you guys. But um, it's going to be a well-deserved week off for me. Right, these are the comrades for the uh, transit over there that Isaac's doing. Uh, you can see he's lightly held them in the vice there. Very lightly, with the yeah. the aluminium jaws. Nothing too strenuous on them. <laughs> um, so, mate, what have you found with the uh, housing diameter? Well, I've only done this one so far, but that okay. one's all good. It's right. in the middle of the tolerance. So um, that's fine. So what it's is, not overalled or anything. So. What, is the, what is the size for the housing? So we found these, these for the sizes. So you've um, got two point... So this is an Imperial, 2.2045 yep. to 2.2054, which is 0.9 of a thou, which is quite a lot of tolerance. That. Yep. Usually they're about 0.6 of a thou. Um, so we'll just show people how we set the gauge again. So, so well, set the gauge set on the, the mic. Set the size on there. Um, so as you can see, set that 2.50, what's it? 2.2054, which is top limit. Yeah, um, and you obviously Put that in there and zero it, um, and then you can so if you check the size. So when it gets to the zero, and that means it's on top limit. So that's the bigger size. So if it goes over that, um, you can run up to obviously 0.9. So that's like yeah. one under the one. So that look, looks like it's dead centre in the um, yeah in the tolerance there. Check it all the way around. So we, we tend to like to run them on the mid to slacker side. So if it was on, oh, a bit tight there. Yeah. So if oh, it was if not. it was down near the one, we would probably see that they are they are always very slightly oval. Yeah. Um, but because he's sort of mid limit up to slacker, then that is absolutely fine. Um, if it was down to near the one, we would ease that out probably half a thou. Yeah. Um, but that looks ideal, mate. So. Cool. Hopefully all the rest are the same. Um, you can see Isaac is over here. He's cleaned most of the bits. The, uh, the crank's in. <coughs> uh, so we just spin that crank. We've checked all the running clearances. I know this is only just a sort of standard diesel build, but he's still go for all the checks, etc. cetera. Um, so the head's all done, isn't it? Head's done, just there, stood up. Crank's all torqued up. Uh, I've only talked it to about 20 foot pound at the minute just oh, okay. to check it spins all right and then yeah. I'll talk it up properly in, in a minute really. Yeah, lovely. You know, you can sometimes find with some of these blocks when you, you do them to the, before you do the last stage, the crank can lock solid. So, yeah. um, 
But well, that turns nice and freely, nice. so with a bit of luck, when you do the final stage, it'll be, it'll be all good. Um, the annoying thing about this transit is, <laughs> we found out the other day with the, with the new hydraulics, so we, the rockers are all been checked, they're all fine, um, but the hydraulic lifters we just replace as a matter of course, because obviously these have done a few miles, but they actually list so many different size bits, they piss about basically, so they do four different hydraulics for the same engine, um, they do, if I could find one of the old ones, you go Lee. Got one there. We've got one of the old ones. So right. these are the right. new ones right. here. So they do a they do a narrow top and a, a big diameter top, um, and they also do an 11 mil and a 12 mil diameter base that goes into the housing. Um, but they'll do the 11 and the 12 in both of them. So they do four different combinations, which is a bit annoying. Um, and sure enough, when we put in the registration at the parts place, um, it come up with the two that it actually isn't. So. You normally find this with these, usually Renault is good for that. Um, same with the oil pumps, they list two or three different oil pumps, but fortunately we picked the right one. Um, so yeah, bit of a ball eight, but... Yeah, well, getting there, so... Getting there, nearly there. Should be done this week. together today and then... That'd be nice, mate. Yeah. Quick turnaround. Yeah. All right, guys. Monday afternoon. See the time up there, look, that's an hour fast. It's got to go back, it's confusing me all day. Um, but yeah, just started to reface this commercial six cylinder, whether it's a John Deere or Cummins or something like that. Um, but yeah, whopper. Give it a five thou cut already, but you can see how much this has warped there. See where it hasn't cleaned. So um, fortunately, the valves are recessed into the head, so you haven't got to remove all the valves. So it's just literally a reface. But um, yeah, you can just sort of see how these heads sort of they don't just bend, but they sort of sort of bend that way as well. Um, so obviously, any further than that, we'll have to do a leak test and make sure all the valves aren't leaking. But um, yeah, nice heavy. We'll get the heavy ones out of the way. Right then, guys, I've just started the normally aspirated Cosworth engine. I'm just checking out my clearances and what have you, and there's been a little bit of an issue. What I'm gonna go on about now is the main reason that we a particular about the running clearances on the crank, the mains and the big ends. Um, and I just want to sort of explain a little bit. I know I've gone through this quite a lot, but it is so important as to why you should check with micrometers, um, all your measuring gear, you should check the crank journal, the bearing thickness, and also the housing side, as well as do a final check with plastic gauge. So, this was just polished after we balanced it. It's at 0 0.25, 0 0.25, so which is 10 thou on the mains and 10 thou on the big ends. So we've checked this crank and we are on bottom limit on the mains and we are also on bottom limit of the big ends. The housings of the conrods and the mains are on top limit, which means they're on the bigger side. So what I mean by that on the limits is you have a tolerance um, so if we have a little look here just move this crank quickly if we have a look in this book say for instance the mains you've got 2.3866 and 2.3874 so that is a difference of 0.8 of a thou okay i'm sorry if i'm working in thou's here and not metric these are the metric sizes above here so that is point 0.02 of a difference, okay, which equates to an eighth of a thou, basically, which is quite a lot of clearance. Um, so you bear in mind, you've got that clearance. You've also got that sort of clearance on the housing. So the housing in the block, once the cap's torqued down, you've got probably, uh, well, it'll tell you here. So if you've got, you've got housing here, so you've got 866 to 874. So you've got 8,000 there. And on the crank journal, you've got, sorry, 243 to 2437. So seven on the crank journal, sorry, and 0.8 on the housing. So if you put those both together, you could be a thou and a half out, um, depending if you've got that on the, if that's on the bigger side and the housing on the smaller side you can be about a thou and a half different than if that is on the smaller side and the housing's on the bigger side so not only that but king bearings in particular not a lot of people know but for 
one particular size, so say for 0.25 or 10 thou, um, you, you've got about three different thicknesses of the bearings which you could actually go for. So that's why it's very difficult a lot of the time if you just order 0.25 bearings, you'll get one thickness turn up. Um, so yes, you can measure the bearing thickness, but that's why we always do a final plastic gauge um, on the crank when we assemble it just to see what we've actually got and on this one guys we've ended up although everything's within limit we've ended up with about three and a half thou running clearance on the mains and we've ended up with three thou running clearance on the big ends which is clearly too much we need to be aiming for i like to go for about a thou per inch of journal obviously because it's 2.2 you want to be running about 2.25 thou of running clearance on the mains and the big ends if we have a look down the big ends here it's just over it's around about a two inch journal so we want to be running about two inches here um we i have gone in the past i've gone to two and a quarter on the big ends and about two and a half on that so basically guys the moral of the story is we're going to be running too much running clearance here um, if you run too much running clearance the oil disperses out the side of the bearing you can have, end up with low oil pressure um, and it can also hammer out the, the, the bearings a lot more than if you was running a, a tighter clearance. So that's why we need to, it's critical that we get it right. Because this is 0.25, we can go down to 0.5. A lot of people would, if they didn't do a, a plastic gauge, you would measure them. They're sort of within um, tolerance, so they would just put that together. It all turns nicely, but the longevity of the engine is just not going to be very good. So we're going to be grinding this crank at 0.5 on the mains and the big ends, and we're going to be aiming for top limit. So that will be the bigger size of the big end and the mains, and that should bring us about the running clearance that we want to run. So yeah, it's absolutely imperative that you do all those checks whenever you're building an engine of any type, not just the Cosworth guys, because obviously the other way round, you could be too tight and, and the bearings are just not going to last two minutes. So yeah, let that be a lesson. Take note and please do all your checks and check it finally with the plastic gauge. There we go, guys. Monday is almost complete. That's it for another video. Um, I'm sorry to just drone on guys about these bearing clearances etc but you've got to understand we know that a lot of maybe guys that are building engines at home etc watch our channel we know that you take it as an informative channel we know that because obviously that time I did a video back in the day um, suggesting that it was a, an entertainment channel a lot of you didn't agree with that you take it as of what we say as gospel so we understand now whatever we put out has got to make sense um, and be accurate because a lot of you guys are going to be putting engines together there's a lot of money involved a lot of time involved and it could be catastrophe so that's why we drum in um, these bearing clearances etc to you guys um, also it seems like a lot of the engines that we have are because people watch our videos and they understand the depth of to what we go into with these engine builds like the bearing clearances etc making sure everything is absolutely cock on for the application so i hope it's all making sense i know it's quite hard to explain on camera sometimes but um yeah as long as some of it a bit at a time makes sense to you we'll keep going over the same things um and one day you'll be uh, you'll be an expert hey eh? but until wednesday's video guys have a great evening we'll see you then take care